This is day 29 of my six mark challenge for AQA GCSE Science. In the run up to the exams, each day from Monday to Saturday, I'm posting a new six marker so that you can practice how to answer these extended response questions and check your answers to find out how many marks you would have got. You can find a link in the description below to each week's questions and also access all of the previous videos via the playlist. Today's question is an evaluate question from unit 10, which is the using resources unit in AQA GCSE chemistry paper two. Now these evaluate questions are great when they come up because you can get full marks on them, even without knowing a huge amount of science, as long as you understand what an evaluate question is asking you. So the key thing here is firstly that you need to make some kind of comparison and that means you actually need to add some value to the information that you've been given. It isn't just enough to quote the numbers from the table, you also need to be using words like more or less and hopefully doing some calculations to show how much more and how much less. And then the crucial thing for an evaluate question is that you must write a conclusion. There is one mark scheme for all of the AQA GCC science evaluate questions, and it talks about a strongly justified conclusion. So if you don't say that one particular side of the argument is better then the most marks you can get is four out of six. So now that you know that, pause the video and give yourself six minutes to answer this six mark question. Whenever you get an evaluate question and you're given a table like this with some information, your first step before you write anything down should be to annotate that table with as much information as you can possibly include. Your examiner is allowed to give you marks for annotations that you've made on the table that you haven't actually included in your answer, but also it's going to help you to get a structure clear in your head before you start. The other thing to think about is basically this is life cycle assessment. So what are the key parts of the life cycle assessment? And is there anything that you need to include that they might not have given you information about in the table? So hopefully you know that in a life cycle assessment, you need to include the raw materials, the manufacture, the use and the disposal, and also going across all four of those, the transport. So the transport of the raw materials and then the transport of the final product and the transport on the way to dispose of it and so on and so on. So you want to make sure that you've included all of those in your answer. And then, as we say, you want to be comparing the two options here, the plastic plate and the paper plate. And as far as you can, you want to be adding value by bringing in things that you know that aren't included in the table or by doing calculations. So if we start off with the raw materials, you hopefully know that crude oil, which is used to make the plastic plate, is a finite or non renewable resource. And also there's going to be damage to the environment in extracting it. So you've got to drill down to get that oil and that's not great. Now we can also think about the transport of that oil and the fact that there's the possibility of a crude oil spill, which is obviously completely disastrous for the environment. Then with our paper plate, it's made from wood, which is a renewable resource. But in chopping down those trees, there is going to be some habitat destruction. Now, a lot of the time, that's not a massive deal because often you're going to have a plantation that's been specifically grown in order to produce that wood. But there are still going to be various organisms living in that woodland. And also we may have had to fell a different habitat in order to make that plantation in the first place. But on balance, we're probably going to conclude that when it comes to raw materials, the plastic is less sustainable than the paper plate. Then if we start thinking about the manufacture, they've told us that the manufacture of the plastic plate is going to require fractional distillation, followed by cracking, followed by polymerization. Now, you know from your unit seven studies that all of those processes are going to take a huge amount of energy. So this is going to be a very energy intensive process. Now, making paper plates isn't going to involve as much energy, although it will still involve some, but it uses these bleaches and other chemicals. So we can say that those are going to be bad for the environment, but at the same time, depending on how we're manufacturing this paper plate, it may be possible to stop all of those nasty chemicals from going into the environment. So although they could be really harmful, they don't necessarily have to be. So on balance here, the paper plate is probably still winning. Then we can think about the masses of these plates and we can say that the plastic plate is four times heavier. Now notice there that I haven't just said, oh, it's heavy, and I haven't said it's 80 grams. I've actually specified how many times heavier is it. And the reason we, that we care about it being heavier is that when it comes to transporting these plates, the heavier it is, the fewer we're going to be able to transport in one go, and the more fuel it's going to take to transport it. 
Well, why do I care about burning more fuel? Well, it's because it's going to release carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. So actually, when it comes to looking at the mass of the plates, again, that plastic plate is the less sustainable option. Finally, when we get to the water, now we start to see something where actually the paper plate is looking less favourable. It takes a huge amount more water to make paper than it does to make plastic. So here I can say that's 20 times more water. But actually, it's not completely cut and dry because when you have those paper plates, you're going to use them once and then throw them away, whereas the plastic plates you're going to use again and again. So you're going to need to wash them in between times. So you are going to be using more water in the overall use of those plates compared to the paper plates. But overall here, we're probably going to conclude that our paper plate is less sustainable when it comes to this one. And then when it comes to disposal, we can put the plastic plates in landfill, but they're not biodegradable. So they're going to sit there, they're going to take up space. Um, we might need more landfill space, which involves more habitat destruction and that sort of thing. Whereas when we send the paper plates to landfill, they are going to biodegrade. So they're not going to take up that space for very long, but in the process of biodegrading, those decomposers, those um, bacteria and fungi that break it down are going to release um, methane and methane is a greenhouse gas. Incidentally, I wouldn't just write GHG here. I would write out greenhouse gas in full, um, but I was being lazy. Now, either one of these plates could be incinerated and in both instances, that's going to release carbon dioxide, which again, we can say is a greenhouse gas. And then also they can both be recycled. Um, if we recycle the plastic, then we need quite a lot of energy in order to melt it and reform it. And in recycling the paper, we're also going to need some energy, not as much, um, but also we're going to need a huge amount of water again. So having made all of those annotations, I would then put together some brief bullet points summarising the evidence in favour of each one of these options. Now, the most important thing to remember is that wherever there is an evaluate question, you are always capped at four marks until you have a strongly justified conclusion. So if you haven't picked one option to say it's better, or in this instance, more sustainable, then you're not going to be able to get five or six marks, no matter how much detail you've included. AQA tend to set up their questions so that actually you could argue in favour of either option, depending on the evidence that you picked. So don't worry too much if you don't feel like there's one clear winner, but you have to say that one is better than the other. Um, so here, I think that most of the evidence probably is pointing in one direction. So I would have a conclusion that was something like this. So I talk about paper plates being more sustainable because despite them needing that extra water, they are made from a renewable resource, they require less energy to manufacture, and also um, it's going to take less fuel to transport them, and therefore there are going to be fewer greenhouse gases released, less carbon dioxide being released because there's less fuel being burned in the lorry trying to transport them. Tomorrow's question comes from the WAVES topic of GCSE Physics. Don't forget, you can find a link in the description below to all of this week's questions and also the playlist with all of the previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again tomorrow for day 30 of the Six Mark Challenge. If you have found this video useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCC Science revision videos coming soon.